Hello, my wonderful art-loving friends. It's been a while since I've done a relaxing, ASMR-ish kind of a video. It's this time of the year where Northern Hemisphere is turning into autumn and Southern Hemisphere is turning to spring. I just wanted to reminisce a little bit about autumn and do this relaxing sketch. I will use watercolor and ink to create this painting. You can watch this video and relax with me. It's very important to take some time out for calm and relaxation, especially these days when things sometimes are just not simple. A lot of stress and heartache. So for a moment we can leave all of that behind and focus on a creative project inspired by this beautiful time of the year, autumn. Hello, I'm Leila. Welcome to my studio. For this tutorial I will be using a couple of brushes, a watercolor palette, watercolor paint, ink, and some ink feathers. First things first, let's put a masking tape on to create nice clean edges. Now as I said, this will be an autumn inspired artwork. I'm not going to go for the super realistic effect. I want to create almost like a book illustration feel and the main focus of this composition will be colors and mushrooms. So here I'm sketching through the basic composition to help me guide my painting process. This area here, the mushroom head, will become an ellipse because it's a perfect circle but under a specific perspective it changes into an ellipse. I already have a video about that. If you'd like to know about this a little bit more in detail, make sure to go and check it out. For the leg of the mushroom, for the foot of the mushroom, I'm using a central line to help me build and structure the foot correctly. I want to place a little mouth right underneath this mushroom. Or maybe it's not a little mouse, maybe it's a rat. Now that I've marked the main lines of my composition, I am erasing the unneeded lines. So everything that I don't need at the moment, I can get rid of it with an eraser. A little tip. Feather is the best way to get rid of your little eraser bits without smudging your artwork and creating any damage to paper. Now I'm ready to paint, applying water to the background to moisten the paper. First I'm going to start with cadmium orange for orange and cerulean blue for blue. I will be adding other colors as I go along with the painting. Now adding a little bit of red, some deep yellow, and some cerulean blue. Cerulean blue is the perfect color 
to show that autumn sky where you still have a little bit of blue but it's turning almost grayish blue and here we can let it mix in with the yellow to still remind us that some trees are still a little bit green add the paint and let it do its thing now I'm reaching out for Van Dyke Brown and mixing it together with Cerulean Blue and adding a little bit of the darker background shade avoiding the mushrooms at this stage Here is some cerulean blue and neutral tint mix. By the way, if you are enjoying this video, make sure to go and check out my Patreon page. Where just for eight dollars a month, you will get access to all the extra videos, very informational. Some of them are relaxing. Make sure to do it, even if you don't want to pledge any money, Patreon now has opened a free subscription as well. So make sure to go there and check it out. I will have the link under this video. And I look forward to seeing you there, guys, as well. And this is just a one deck brown on its own. Mixing it right on the paper. And now to make it lighter, I'm going to dry my brush and absorb some of the paint. Again, wash my brush, dry it on the paper towel and absorb Now I've got a mix of Van Dyke Brown and Neutral Tint. You can use black if you don't have Neutral Tint. I'm just going to paint over this little mouse. I'm also going to add a little bit of orange here and there over the back and the ears of this cute little mouse. Now I'm going back for more orange and a little bit of blue here to mix into green. If you mix blue and orange together, you get a very browny, very deep kind of a green. Just perfect for autumn. Around this area I want to blend the mushroom with the background a little bit more. Now here I have a little bit of hooker's green on my brush and I'm mixing in other colors I've been using on my palette. Some areas making them a little bit deeper while there's still moisture on the paper. Just adding some Van Dyke brown as branches in the distance. So here we have the majority of our background done. Now you see how I didn't worry about the details or what exactly is running into where. You want to stop being a control freak sometimes with watercolor and just let it do its thing. Now that the background is pretty much touch dry, I can start working on the mushrooms. Before I do that though, I want to show you a really cool technique on how to preserve some of the white spots. So here I have my masking tape. I'm going to cut out 
random patches of the size that I need and stick them onto the mushroom If you do have masking fluid, you can use that, of course. Now I'm going to re-wet only this area here, right at the top of the mushroom. And I'm mixing cadmium orange with some red. Now I'm going to start painting. I want the color to be a little bit light at the bottom and more intense on the top. So here I'm going in with just red. And a little bit of brown just to tone the red down. At the same time here on the bottom I'm going to do the drying brush effect. And now I'm going to follow through with the other two mushrooms. And then brighter red. Next I'm going to use a mix of brown and a little bit of yellow, but in a very diluted way to create a little bit of the shading on the leg of the mushroom. In this situation, we have cool colors on the background and warmer colors on the foreground in the mushroom and that creates a very, very special glow in the composition. Now on my brush, I have a mix of brown, blue and neutral tint and I'm just adding a little bit of the shadows here and there. And no, we didn't forget about our little friend. We are going to give it a little pink tail. And a little bit of pink on the belly and the ears. Also, in its paws, it's holding a little round red berry. We don't want our little friends to be hungry, so we're going to feed them, at least in the painting. Now we can remove the masking tape spots that we've applied. Now I'm going to take even a smaller brush and mix the shadow color with the orange. Create few details. And also a quick little wash over the spots just to make them appear a little bit more as part of the mushroom rather than just spots. Now once again I'm going to leave all of this to dry so that we can move on to the next step which is using ink. When working with the ink, you don't want to put your coil all the way down, you just want to dip it a little bit and pick up just a tiny little bit of ink like this, especially for the technique that we are going to use here. I'm going to start from the top, working down to the bottom. But the only reason for that is just that I don't want to be smudging things as I go along. Here I'm going to bring out a few of the leaves and of course the branches.
in some really dark areas you can even feel spots up together with that ink like for example here on the bottom of the tree remember don't go overboard with ink only use it in the areas that you really want to point out You can always substitute your coil for just a black ink pen, but I think that you get a much better result using this tool. Now let's get on to the mushroom. darkness under the hat really brings out that feeling of autumn here we can bring some definition to the grass We will dry up seeds. And now last but not least, let's not forget about our little friend. The A little berry little hairs here and there A little bit more of the detail of the background just around the mouth. Different mark making creates different textures, so make sure to experiment when you're working on your own
And in the tradition of autumn, some birds flying away. Okay, it's finished. And now the only thing that's left to do is to remove the masking tape. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I want to thank all of my patrons for supporting this channel. Thank you guys so much. I hope this video has helped you to relax and unwind a little bit because I know sometimes things can be a little bit tricky but we always need to take time to relax. So important for our well-being. Thank you so much for keeping me company guys where I've been painting and drawing and I hope to see you soon in the next video. Bye bye!